Okay. Uh, and then in the interest of time, please keep your questions related to A2F. Also, before we get started, I wanted to mention that the release of these grades has caused a great deal of confusion. I'd like to refer you to a quote from Texas Education Agency Commissioner Mike Morath regarding the proposed A2F system. The ratings in this report are for informational purposes to meet a legislative requirement and represent work in progress models that are likely to change before A2F ratings become effective in August 2018. No inferences about official district or campus performance in the 2015-16 school year should be drawn from these ratings, and these ratings should not be considered predictors of future district or campus performance ratings. So in other words, these grades are mock grades and aren't in fact our real results at all, although the state did release them. Uh, it's, a, it's as confusing to us as it probably will be to you, but it, we do believe it's important that you see the proposed methodology. So with that, I'll turn the present over, presentation over to Dr. Melissa Duarte. So as Beth uh, shared with the group, uh, these ratings are practice ratings. They certainly are not a reflection of where districts or campuses stand within the state of Texas. And I do want to go a little bit further on what Beth shared. These ratings, in this report that I'm going to be going through are based on rating cut points that were determined by the commissioner for the purpose of demonstrating one possible but not necessarily the final approach. So we are expecting changes in the calculation and the way the state will be evaluating the A through F system. So there are five domains that the district and campuses will receive A through F ratings, and then districts and campuses will receive an overall score from the state. The very first domain we're looking at is student performance. Now student performance is also aligned to the state accountability system where we receive a MET standard or required improvement rating. Within domain one, very similar to index one, districts are, are rated based on their student uh, performance and we're calculated based on our test results. So we look at all of the exams that are administered and we receive points based on each of those tests. So we will get a point for what the state considers satisfactory standard or the student passed the test we also get a point if they met post-secondary readiness, which the state calls our final level two. And we can get a third point if they score at the advanced standard, more at the upper level or exemplary of what we're used to. So every child can bring in or every exam can bring in up to three points. So we have a 300 point scale. So I'm going to look at the district calculation to give you an idea of what it looks like for Goose Creek. So as you're going to see, we administered in 2015-2016 37,747 exams in our district. And out of those exams, 27,120 or 71.8% of our students passed their exams. Then when we look at that post-secondary readiness, we have 38.4% of our students meeting that level, and we have 12.9% scoring at the advanced standard. So if we look at all three of those passing standards and we divide it by 300, you're going to see that the district received a score of 41. So the question is, what does 41 equate to? So the state set some cut scores that we use, and for the district to get an A, we would have had to have a 60. To get a score of a B, we would have had a 47. C, 39, so you can see they came up with these numbers to determine a letter rating. So with the district receiving a score of a 41, that would give us a letter grade of a C. We also get evaluated for any of our alternative Q 
campuses, and we have one campus in the district, which is Peter E. Highland, and you're going to see their score. We have four high school campuses that are rated, so you're going to see Impact, Lee, Sterling, and Goose Creek Memorial. We've also provided the calculations on how each campus was rated within the, in, within the domain. We've got our junior school domain scores, Baytown Junior, Cedar Bayou, Gentry, Highlands, and Horace Mann. And we have our elementary campuses, and those are alphabetized. We've got Alamo and Bowie on this slide. We have Carver through Harlem, and Highlands Elementary through Victoria Walker. So the second domain, this is known as student progress. Again, this is aligned to our index system, so index two within our accountability system also measures student progress. So when we look at domain two, the state has calculated this based on students meeting or exceeding progress. So what the state does is they look at the score that the child received the previous year, the score the child received the current year, and did they make progress that the state expects or did they exceed within that progress that they've demonstrated. Now what happens in domain two is we also look at 10 student groups. So when we look at those student groups, we're evaluated based on all students. We have seven racial and ethnic groups we're evaluated on, special education, and our English language learners. So some districts may only be evaluated in two measures, other districts could be measured up to 10 areas. So what you've got on the, on the screen is nine out of the 10. So Goose Creek is evaluated in nine areas. The only one we do not qualify in is Pacific Islander. So when we look at this, we've got all students, African American, Hispanic, white, American Indian, Asian, two or more races, special education, and our English language learner population. So we look at the number of students or percentage that met or exceeded progress. So when you look at all students, 59% of our students met or exceeded. And then we look at how many of those exceeded. They went well above in their growth and we have 15%. So you're gonna see the domain two points that the district receives within each subgroup. So when we calculate the nine subgroups, and we can earn up to 200 points for each area, we get a score of 37. So what does the 37 refer to? Well, if we look at the targets that the state set for this year, you would see that uh, Goose Creek would have scored a C. Again, we have an alternative campus, and you're going to see those targets change based on each level. We've got our high school domain two targets, and you've got the scores. We also um, want to look at the calculations. We know that the district was evaluated in nine out of the 10 areas. If you look at impact, they're only evaluated over two subpopulations, while GCM is evaluated over seven subpopulations. So that adjusts based on the student population for each campus. You've got the junior school scores. And again, you're going to see some differences for each campus. Our um, most diverse would be Gentry with eight, and then you've got Baytown and Horseman with six. And then you've got our elementary ratings, again, with their calculations. We've got Carver through Harlem. And we've got Highlands through Victoria Walker. 
So domain three, again, aligned to the state accountability system, index three looks at closing the performance gap. Now this one is um, quite complicated and, and a lot of fun for districts and campuses to look at. When we talk about closing the achievement gap and we look at our state accountability for meeting standards or meeting improvement, the state looks at your two lowest performing race or ethnicities. So it could be white and Hispanic or African American and white. It also looks at your population that is economically disadvantaged. In the domain system, when we're talking about closing the achievement gap, the only group that they're looking at is your economically disadvantaged student group. And then they evaluate that subpopulation by itself looking at, again, did they pass the test, did they meet the post-secondary readiness standard, and did they meet the advanced standard? So very similar to domain one, looking at one small sub-pop. Then the state came up with a predicted score based on your free and reduced population. This is a score you should have received. So for example, we look at the district calculation. Out of the 37,000 tests we administered, 24,597 of the exams were taken by students who qualify for free and reduced or are economically disadvantaged. So when we look at that population, 67.8% passed the test, 33.2% scored at the post-secondary readiness level, and 9.9% .9 scored at the advanced level. So when we look at our actual score, we have a 37. Then what happens is the state has put together a predicted score. And so you've got this calculation here, negative 0.156666. The 64 is our percentage of students that are free and reduced. So this predicted score is going to change based on every district's free and reduced. So the state says we should have scored a 35.9. Our district scored a 37. So our students outperformed what the state would have predicted for us. Now the interesting thing is we outperformed by 1.1 points. Outperforming is still considered a C. In fact, you had to outperform by seven points to score an A in this domain. So it's very questionable on, on how we come up with an A, a B, or a C, especially if you are outperforming. So again, we do the same thing for our, our, our alternative campus, and you're going to see their overall score, their actual score, what the state would have predicted for them based on their free and reduced, and then what their score would have calculated to. We have the same thing at the high schools. And then we demonstrated how they calculated their scores. We've got our junior school scores. So again, Horace Mann outperformed by 1.6. That gave them a score of a C. And we've got all of our elementaries. So even Asheville Smith, who outperformed by 2.1, received a C, where Alamo outperformed by 2.5, and they earned a B. We've got Carver through Harlem. And we've got Highlands through Victoria Walker. So the next domain we have is domain four, and that's identified as post-secondary readiness. Again, aligned to the index system, so index four also measures post-secondary readiness. Now what's quite interesting is our index system, where all of our campuses met standard, no, none of our campuses are required improvement, are calculated looking at potential post-secondary readiness indicators. When we look at our domain system, 
for an elementary campus to be evaluated in post-secondary readiness, the state only looked at chronic absenteeism. And, and they've used chronic absenteeism to measure or evaluate how post-secondary ready a campus is. So you can kind of see a disconnect within the evaluation system. A middle school is also evaluated 50% on chronic absenteeism and 50% on their dropout rate. Our high schools and district are the most aligned, and that's looking at graduation rate, um, post-secondary readiness or students who graduated based on or completed a CTE coherent sequence, completed 12 or more hours of post-secondary, one or more AP classes, and met the TSI benchmark on TSIA, SAT, or ACT, and their graduation plan rate. So we need to have a definition of chronic absenteeism, and the state has defined that for us. They have, students have to be non-mobile, and they cannot miss 10% or more of the instructional days within the calendar year. So when we look at the district calculation, it's identified just like our high schools. We look at graduation rate, which counts for 28.6% of the overall score. They look at college and career ready graduates, which accounts for 57% of the score, and our graduation plan, which is at 14% of the score. So graduation rate and graduation plan, you're going to see the district score is very high. We have an 89.6 and an 88.9. In fact, the district outperforms the state in both graduation rate and graduation plan. Now, the college and career ready graduates has to do a lot with coding when we look at our coherent sequence and then those other indicators. That, the score is a little bit lower for the district, which is also the higher percentage. So when we break down our percentages, the district gets 72.2% out of 100%. So the question is, what does a 72 look like in an A through F system for domain four? Well, you had to score a 73 to get a D, you had to have an 81 for a C, a 91 for a B, and you had to have a 96 for an A. So the district at 72.2 missed it by 8 tenths of getting a D. Now the question is, when you think of a 70, are you thinking of that being an F? Again, we have our alternative campus, or Petery Highland, and you're going to see they scored at a C. We've got our high schools, IMPACT through GCM. We've got Baytown Junior School through Horace Mann. Now the interesting thing here is you had to be above a 91 to earn a D. You had to have a 99, almost a perfect score, to earn an A. And our elementary campuses, where we talked about just chronic absenteeism only, you had a 98 to get an A, a 96 for a B, a 93 for a C, and a 90 to meet a D. So you were completely in the A range, even though that would equate to an F for a campus. And so you're going to see the scores for Alamo through Bowie, Carver through Harlem, and Highlands Elementary through Victoria Walker. Domain five, districts and campuses did not receive a score. Domain five looks at our accountability scorecard. So the district and campuses have not selected those two areas that they would be evaluated by the state. So that domain has not been um, provided at this point, which means the district and campuses would also not receive an overall score. So we don't know what that would look like at this point. So what we do is we have all of the domains and their scores based on each domain. For the high schools, you've got the junior schools, and we have our elementary data tables. 
I think one of the challenges that, that districts and campuses face in the state of Texas is we are evaluated on six different accountability systems. The state already provides a PEG system, and campuses are identified for that list. They already tell us if a, if a campus or district has met standard or if they need improvement required. We also have an accountability system that identifies your focus and your priority schools within the state. We have the performance-based system, the PBMAS, that looks at No Child Left Behind, bilingual, special education, career and technology. We have the upcoming A through F system, and each campus and district can earn distinction designations. And so it becomes very complex and at some points convoluted because you're using the same data to determine if a campus earns an F, yet they're meeting standard and they are not identified as focus or priority and they're not on the PEG list. And so there's not that alignment, that seamless understanding within all of the accountability systems. So this really gives you a very brief overview of the current A through F. Now, this is going to change. Uh, there are some discussions on what domain four will look like. They want to include additional measures. Cut scores may look different once the state completes this process. So again, these are not a true reflection on where the campuses or districts are. It's just to kind of give us a beginning understanding of what's going to be coming in the next two years. Thank you, Dr. Torte. Um, this is Beth again. Um, again, I apologize for all the technical issues, but um, in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you can now see a chat uh, feature, a chat box. If you have a question, please feel free to type it in, uh, and we can see it, and we will be happy to provide an answer. Okay, great. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. We have been recording it, so we will get this posted to our district website. Um, and you have my email address, obviously, that's it's several to you. So if you have any, any further questions or comments, please feel free to email me, and I will be happy to get those answered for you. Thank you for joining tonight, and have a nice evening.